In this video, I'd like to show you how you can lay out your UVs using the tools available in Maya to assign a texture map to a polygonal object. A good analogy for laying out UVs is if you can think about it like you're unfolding a box. So if the box is your piece of geometry, what you want to do is take each one of those panels and lay it out flat so that all the points of the UVs are lying flat on the same plane. And the goal there is none of them are overlapping and that they're all evenly spaced and there's no stretching or compression happening. The way you achieve that uniform layout of your UVs is by cutting, and the analogy there is that you are acting as a tailor. And that process of cutting is sometimes referred to as pelting, and the goal here is that you would cut along a seam in order to make as few cuts as possible. And then once you've made your cuts, you would lay out all that fabric flat on a planar surface, and with the goal of bringing them back together, for example, to make a shirt, uh, you would take those UVs of your patterns and lay them all flat so that all the UVs would lie on a flat, planar surface. And that way you can get your textures properly aligned. So I'm going to start here in Maya, and I've got a polygonal torus. And I'm going to select that and open up my UV texture editor. And I just want to confirm that there are no UVs already assigned to this piece of geometry. So this is a blank piece of polygonal geometry without any UVs already assigned to it. And the first thing that we need to do to get started is to assign some generic UVs as a starting point so that we have something that we can start to edit and manipulate to get the UV layout that we want. So I'll open my Hypershade window and I'll create a new Lambert shader. And I'm going to call that Taurus. And then I'll assign it to that piece of Geo. And in order to visualize how evenly our UVs are spaced out, I'm going to apply a texture map that is a UV utility texture. So I can come in here to the attribute editor of that shader, and in the color channel input node, I'm going to select a file. And the texture that I'm going to choose is this UV utility map. So I've got that texture assigned there, and we can see it in our shader, but it is not showing up on the object because we haven't created any UVs yet. So I'm going to select my geometry and come up here to the polygonal menu set, and under Create UVs, I'm going to choose Planar Mapping. And the default settings are uh, Bounding Box and X-Axis. I'm just going to set this to best plane and apply that. And I'm not too concerned about how these UVs look. All I'm interested in at this point is to create a generic UV set so that I can go in there and start to manipulate the UVs and lay them out in a fashion that is appropriate for this geometry. So now I can come in here and take a look at how these UVs are laid out on that surface. So if I come in here to my UV texture editor and select the UVs, you can see that they're evenly spaced out in this circular pattern. But the problem is, is that if I look in my side view, you can see that stretching that's happening along the edges of that torus. So it's happening along the inside ring and along the edges of the outer ring. We're getting a lot of distortion there. And that's because the UVs on top of the torus and the UVs on the bottom of the torus are overlapping here. So one of the goals of laying out your UVs is to unfold them and separate those UVs so that they do not overlap each other. So to start that unfolding process, we're going to make some cuts in our geometry. And this is the process that is often referred to as pelting. And the idea is that we would make as few cuts as possible so that we don't have more seams than we need. So I'll switch into edge selection mode. I'll select my object and then select the edge. And I'm going to pick an edge loop here, and by double-clicking it, it is selecting the entire edge all the way around that torus. You can see the edge loop is also selected here in my UV texture editor. And now what I'm going to do is cut that. I can come up here to Edit UVs and Cut UV Edges. There's also an icon here in the UV texture editor that looks like a pair of scissors that does the same process. So that cut has created what's called a UV border edge, but I can't really see it in this display, and I'd like to know that it's there. So I can come up here to Display, Polygons, and Texture Border Edges, and now that border edge gets a little bold highlight. If I'd like to make that a little bit larger, I can change the edge width, 
and set that to a higher number and now it's just a bolder, thicker line that's easy to see. So now we can tell Maya we would like to unfold this cylindrical shape based on that cut. So we can come over here to the UV texture editor and select our UVs. I'll draw a pick box around the entire shape to select all of them. And I'm going to unfold that. So I come over here to edit UVs and in the pull down menu I'm going to select unfold. And what you can see here now in our UV texture editor is that Maya has made its best guess on how to unfold that cylindrical shape. And it's made a bit of a mess of it. This is probably worse than it was when we started out with the planar projection. But that's okay because one of the nice things about working with UVs in Maya is that they're very flexible. You don't have to worry about doing undos or reloading your project to go back to the beginning. The UV manipulations are very flexible. So for example here, even though my UV layout is a mess, I can still work in my perspective view and try to give Maya a little bit more information about how to lay out these UVs. So I'll create another UV border edge that will essentially let Maya split this cylindrical shape down the side so it can unwrap the cylinder as well. So I could select this outer ring as my edge loop to make the seam on, but that would create a seam that would be visible along the outer edge of the geometry. And so I would prefer to hide that seam. So what I'm going to do instead is select the inner edge loop as a way to conceal the seam where we'll create our UV border edge. So with that inner edge loop selected, I can come up here and say edit UVs, cut UV edges, or I can just select the scissors icon in my UV texture editor. So when I click on that, it will create a second UV border edge. And you can see that also here in the UV texture editor. So now with those two edges selected, I can come in here and select all the UVs again and tell Maya to unfold that geometry based on these two border edges. I can do that here from my Edit UVs pull down and say Unfold, or I can click on the Unfold icon here in my UV Texture Editor. And already you can see that this is looking much better. This whole center section of our UV layout is very even and uniformly distributed, which is exactly what we're looking for. If I select that central area to highlight those UVs, we can look on our geometry and see where those are, and it's around the outer sides of that torus that's getting that nice even distribution. However, if we look along the top side of the geometry, you can see this seam and where we're getting some distortion where the UVs are not following the geometry. And if I select them here, you can see in the UV editor that these are the UVs that are creating that distortion because they're on a curve. So what we want to try to do is straighten out those UVs so that they're evenly distributed. There are a couple of tools in Maya that will help us even out those UVs. And the first one I'll show you is the soft selection mode. If I come in here and I select one UV, uh, you can see that that's the only UV I selected. And if I use the move tool, I can move that UV around the plane. I can also enable soft selection mode by pressing on the B key on the keyboard. And what that does is it selects that central UV plus the UVs that surround it. So now if I start to move these, you can see how the heat map is showing the yellow colored UVs are going to be moved the most. And then the orange and red and black UVs will be moved the least. So as I move this around, you see that stretching that's happening there. If I press and hold on the B key and then click and drag with my left mouse button, I can change the diameter of that selection area to be a little bit smaller. And now if I select that top UV and I increase the radius of the soft selection, I can move that top UV around so I can reduce the distortion using that soft selection tool. So that's one way to approach getting an even distribution of UVs on your surface. If I hit the B key again, it returns me to single selection mode. And if I hit B a second time, I toggle that on and off. So I'll switch back to single selection mode and show you the next technique that we can use to even out our UV distribution. I'm going to zoom out here in the UV texture editor so we can see the entire 0 to 1 range. And I'll select all of my UVs by drawing a pick box around them. And then up here under Edit UVs, I can pull down and select Normalize. And what it does is it takes all the selected UVs and spreads them out to occupy the entire UV texture map from 0 to 1. And that's helpful because it gives me a little bit more space to work with here in my UV texture editor. So I'll frame up on that. 
and I'll show you this next tool that's called the UV lattice tool. Here you can see that the UVs are fairly evenly laid out across the center and horizontal axis of our UV layout. And I'd like to maintain that, but I'd like to relax and spread out these UVs in the top left corner. So the UV lattice tool will allow me to maintain these central UVs while distorting these edge UVs. So I'll select this upper left corner of UVs and I'll select the UV lattice tool, which is available in the tool menu. And it's also on this icon in the upper left corner. And that gives us this lattice that we can now start to pull points along the lattice to even out the distribution of these UVs. And by picking on these handles and pulling them out, it's giving me this kind of localized uh, distribution of the UVs. So it's only pulling and distorting the UVs that are nearest to the lattice points. And I'm moving these points around here just to try to get a uniform distribution in this upper left hand corner. And once I've got those roughly laid out, I can repeat that process in the other corners of the uh, UV layout. So this is already looking much better than what we had previously. And you can see that here in the perspective view that the UVs are starting to look more evenly distributed around the entire surface of the torus. However, when we get over here to the edge, you can see that there's still some distortion happening right along this seam, how that UV texture is not quite evenly aligned to the surface of the polygonal object. So we can go in here and clean that up a little bit more. And what I'd like to do is select these UVs along the edge here. So I'll go into UV selection mode and I'm dragging a pick box just along that top edge. And I wanna make sure I'm just getting the border UVs only. So I'm deselecting anything that's not a border UV. And I would like to move those so that they snap to the grid right along that edge. So if I select my move tool and move those UVs up, if I press and hold the X key, and then slide that down, you can see it's snapping to the grid points along that edge. The problem here is that they're all kind of snapping as a group and they're retaining their current spacing. And I'd like them to uh, snap individually. Each one of these individual UVs, I would like to snap a line to that horizontal edge. So I can double click my uh, tool here to open up the move settings for my move tool. And I'm gonna turn off retain component spacing. And now that I've done that, I can return to my UV texture editor and do the same process. I'll move these UVs up away from the grid and then I'll press on the X key and hold it down while I drag these down. And now you can see they're snapping and aligning to that outer UV edge. I'll repeat that process for the other edge UVs. And now I have a situation where all of my border edge UVs are perfectly aligned to the zero to one space of my texture map. And so what I'd like to do is get an even distribution of these central UVs without moving these border edge UVs that I've already done by hand. And so if I select all of the UVs here and come up to my edit UVs pull down menu, I can choose optimize to try to optimize those UVs. If I use the default settings, you can see that Maya is doing its best to lay out those UVs, but uh, it's returning us to the distortion that we were just trying to clean up. So I'm gonna undo that. And instead of using the default settings, I'll go into the option box for the optimize menu. And I'm gonna switch over to the legacy mode, which is used to be called relax. So optimize is the new version of the relax UVs tool from earlier versions of Maya. And the setting I wanna take advantage of here in our option box is this pin UV border option. With that turned on, it'll leave our border UVs where they are and it will relax the inner UVs. So if I click on the apply button, you can see how it's starting to evenly space those out. If I continue to click on the apply button, it will continue to relax those UVs and distribute them more evenly.
So I can go in here and continue to refine the placement of these internal UVs. But what you can see at this point is that I'm getting a nice even distribution of the UVs across the entire surface of the texture map. And that's exactly what we're looking for. One last tool I will show you is this compression map, and that's a new feature in Maya. If I come up here to my UV texture editor and click on display UV distortion, what that does is it shows you uh, the amount of compression that's being applied to your UV map. So if I enable the perspective view, you can see how that shows up also in the perspective view. And the color coding here in this a uh, compression map is designed to show you which UVs are being stretched and which UVs are being pulled. And if I start to scale these UVs in, that redness that you're seeing there is showing how those UVs are being compressed. The same way if I scale those UVs out, it goes blue. That's an indication that those UVs are being stretched. So the optimum setting here is the white color that you will see in the compression map, and that indicates that you've got an even distribution of UVs across your entire surface. So I can come back here now into the UV texture editor and turn that compression map off again, and then take a look at how our UVs are being laid out across that surface. And one of the things that I'm noticing is that our texture map is being stretched just a little bit here. And the reason for that is that each one of these polygonal faces is rectangular in shape, but we've laid out all our UVs to be square in shape. So if I want the UV layout to follow the topology of the polygonal object, I need to compress these UVs to match that rectangular shape of the polygons. So I can just come in here again and select all those UVs and start to scale them down so that these UVs match the rectangular surface shape of our polygonal object. And what I'm looking for here is that the squares that appear in our texture map actually appear to be squares in the uh, surface of the polygon. So I can scale this vertically in the UV texture editor to try to get the squares here that appear in the texture map to also appear square in the surface of our geometry. And that's looking pretty good there. So I'm getting a nice square shape out of each one of these textures on that surface. So those are just some of the tools and techniques that you can use in Maya to lay out your UVs so that you get a nice even and uniform distribution of UVs across the entire surface of your polygonal object.